what do you think you're doing? You can't park on the sidewalk. Hi, officer. Oh, oh my <laughs> mistake, Miss Wendy. I didn't realize it was you. Yes. Hey, happy Wendy Williams Day. You can do anything you want. Hey, let me get the door. There you are. Thank you. Oh, officer, I've got one question for you. How you doing? <laughs> Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. How are you doing? The kids have come to play today. You won't believe what I'm about to tell you. With all due respect, have several seats. My girls are always turned out. I give it to you straight, no chaser. Now, here's Wendy. It's time for Hot Topics. Wendy Williams Day here in New York City. You, remember, you might remember um, when we did our 500th show, which was Monday, May 23rd in 2012, the city of New York, our mayor at that time, Mayor Bloomberg, gave me a proclamation calling it Wendy Williams Day. And I got the receipt. Yeah. So that means that I get my way all day long. Uh, including the dress that I wanna wear. I wanted to give it to you good. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is the crown that my, my guys got me for Mother's Day, so Aww. yeah. I know, I know, it's special, so why not wear it on your day? Also, to help me celebrate today, I invited my friend, fashion icon, Andre Leon Tollies here. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what's a party without great music? So Designer is here to perform his yeah. number one song. Panda. Okay. Did you watch the Billboard Awards last night? Yeah. Don't worry, I'm getting to Tamar. <laughs> when I said okay, I felt it. That's all right. We will. Um, anyway, um, Sierra and Ludacris hosted. Thought they didn't do such a bad job. <laughs> Britney Spears opened the show, and I thought she did a terrific job. Yeah. You know, her hair looked great, her body looked great, um, and she danced like Britney, you know, she, she's nervous in the beginning and then she loosens up a little bit. Um, and considering all the girl has been through, when I was watching the performance, I said, wow, she's reminding me of why you gotta see her in Vegas. Like, like you, if, you, if you get a chance, you gotta go. She was flipping her hair. Wonder why she's wearing two pair of pantyhose. <laughs> Cause you know, fishnets aren't shiny like that. So she has on like support hose and then the fishnets. Well, if she's got to do that with a terrific body like that, imagine there's no hope for the rest of us. <laughs> anyway, uh, Kesha performed uh, despite her ongoing battle with the producer, Dr. Luke. Um, Kesha reminded me of exactly how beautiful her voice is. She's got a really good voice. And there was a point in her performance where she looked around like, wow, I can't believe I'm here. It was just really sweet. And then she got this gigantic standing ovation. Aww. Yeah. So all in all, you know, I was back and forth watching everything um, last night on TV. I just can't, you know, I got the ADD. I can't just sit. <laughs> I just, you know. But um, I was there in time to see Madonna's tribute to Prince at the end. Um, social media is attacking her, saying the performance wasn't good enough. Um, I have to agree with social media. Uh, 
I, I, but, I, but I also feel like there's certain people, like if you want Britney Spears, for instance, to dance and toss her hair, then you can't expect her to sing at the same time. Nobody is that good, you know? So of course Britney lip sank the whole time. She didn't even need a microphone out there. <laughs> But she was giving us hair tossle and stuff like that. Now, th th with Madonna, I feel as though there's some people, we already know that they need studio help to make their voices like a prayer-ish, you know? <laughs> um, I, I felt like vocally speaking, Madonna sounded horrible. Visually speaking, I thought she looked fabulous. And I love the purple throne, the simplicity of the stage and not a bunch of background dancers and stuff. Um, and I also enjoyed that Stevie Wonder came out there to help her out. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and I still agree, cause I said this in the beginning, I think that Madonna is perfect to do the Prince tribute because she's part of, you know, the triangle, the Trinity and two of the Trinity are dead. You know, pop stars of a particular age, you know, who all came up together and turned us out together with their fabulous music and all that stuff. So with, with Prince being gone and Michael being gone, who's supposed to do it? Janelle Monet? No. <laughs> Now she might have a better voice than Madonna, but I don't wanna see that, I, not, not personally. I just wanna see one of the Trinity do it, that's all. All right, so let's move along. Weekend got kinda bumpy when we all heard that Tamar was fired from the real. Uh, allegedly, allegedly leaving. Um, they say it's a mutual, they say it's a mutual decision. Don't worry, my investigation is not fully done. <laughs> and I'm about to give you my opinion. <clears throat> Cause before, because then Tamar um, put some hints out there on her social media saying that someone stabbed her in the back and she said it's not her sisters and it's not her husband. So who do you think it is? <laughs> Especially when you see that she dropped Lonnie Love, Jeannie Mai, and Adrian Bailon from her social media, but kept Tia Tamara. So Tamar and Tia Tamara are still like this. Them other three broads have been dropped. <laughs> now, upon further invest investigation, okay, so they, they stopped filming the show for the season, so nobody has to you know, sit and screw face each other. Although it's taped though, so they could always stop and then redo if somebody looks screwish. Um, I think that when Lonnie Love, all due respect, when you were here last week, you knew what was about to go down. And I'm not saying that Lonnie and Jeannie and um, Adrian have enough power to get one of their co-hosts fired, but I'll tell you what, when, when wheels squeak too much and then shows start looking at the budget and they, they're like, well, you know, she is kind of diva-ish. That, that was the word regarding um, Tamar. Diva-ish, you know what I call it? I call it little sister syndrome. Cause you see it even on the reality show, like, you know, and it's cute until you have to deal with it every day or deal with it in your own personal life, Tamar. Um, also, um, they were saying that uh, she wasn't like advertiser friendly, um, Tamar. Um, oh. <laughs> it's my day. Yeah. They were saying that Tamar's not advertising friendly and that she had like her ways about her and I guess it might have gotten under the other girl's skin but instead of saying it, uh, boy you all played like you all got along so well on TV. Uh, anyway, do I think that these, um, the, the three girls um, remaining, well the fourth but Tia is, doesn't count because she's still friends with Tamar. Um, do I think those three girls collectively could have gotten her fired? No. Do I think that if they complain enough that the, the suits would start looking? Absolutely, especially because unlike the other girls, there are two checks going to Tamar's house, one for Vince as executive producer, so now he's out, and, and one for Tamar. Aww. And I, you know, it, it's just, it's very sad. Um, I thought she was good with this show. Do I think they should hire somebody to put in the place? Nope. Don't turn this into the view. <laughs> like, you know, it, it's enough that, you know, it's a good gig when you're on daytime TV. You know, you do your thing, you talk nicely to nice people, and then you go home about your business. I don't even have a suggestion for the fifth chair because I feel as though 
these other girls can hold it down. Although it's gonna be nasty behind the scenes. Hey Lonnie, is it true that you're really good friends with B. Scott, the person on the blog that originally um, let all this information out? And now everybody's... <laughs> now Tamar, now, now Tamar, anytime you wanna talk. Anyway, Christina Aguilera is, um, will not be doing her duet uh, tonight on The Voice season finale. She was supposed to be doing that hologram with Whitney Houston on The Voice. See, I can't stand a hologram. Just don't mess with dead people. Like, don't, don't do it, it's, it's just not right. Anyway, Whitney's family um, gave the thumbs up to the hologram and, and um, they, they recorded it. Yeah, that's the hologram, creepy. I think it does look like Whitney. The family was complaining that it didn't look like Whitney in the face. I think, I think it looks like her. Um, all right, so they taped this um, voice season finale like last week, okay. But they've been working on it for months. The hologram billionaire, you know, was talking about it and then the voice got to it and they were working on it. Christina was ready to do it, to perform I'm Every Woman. Okay. So Pat Houston, who's the executor of The Will and her brother Gary were in the audience for this voice taping with the hologram. And afterwards, they, and they were fine with it, by the way. They clapped uh, in the beginning, but at the end, they were like, mm-mm, we're pulling this. We're, we're, we're not gonna let this happen. You know, maybe at another time. I think it looks like, clap if you think it looks like Whitney. Cause that's what they were complaining about. And Christina can wail, and Whitney could wail, and that would have just been like a really good performance. Only thing about, about it is the hologram. Clap if you don't mind a hologram. <laughs> oh. So you would go see Whitney Houston at Radio City Music Hall? Yeah. <laughs> Caught you. I thought we had this conversation. Stop trying to encourage people to clap. Oh, oh you would? I was clapping for myself. Yeah, I would go to Radio City and watch that by myself. So then after obviously. she performs, what do you do? Do you clap? Do you, what do you do? Because she can't hear you clapping. I don't, I would just sit there and watch it. I could take a break from clapping. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, Suzanne. Yes. I see that you have new J's for Wendy Williams now. Yes, I have Air Jordans on. Yes, yes. that's the J. You gave us the stanky yeah. leg. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, no to the holograms. Hey, Chris Brown, I agree with you, but when you fight on social media, then you make it a bigger deal than it really was. Okay, so he's at war with his less than smart baby's mother, Nina. Nia. <laughs> well, Chris got angry after a picture of baby royalty was posted on Nia's Instagram. We don't even follow Nia, so we wouldn't have known anything about this. <laughs> But it's Chris who made it a bigger story by commenting as opposed to just picking up the phone and calling her. Why don't people pick up the phone and call anymore? <laughs> I do. I pick up the phone and call. All right, he, she, um, he goes, it's crazy to me that a parent would okay dressing our daughter like she's 16. I ain't cool with that. <laughs> she is too. And then Nia responds. So now here she goes responding back on social media. So she goes, if anybody thinks something is wrong with a baby in the dance class in her tutu, you need to go pray. Hashtag namaste. Not, not well, okay, hold on. Hold on, because there's one more. So then Chris shot back, I ain't on here to argue back and forth with anyone. Dance class is fine, even with the leotard. The pics just looks Risky, in my opinion. This isn't a debate. She is too. I ain't talking about it on social media any longer. I said my opinion. Well, you know what? You did talk about it on social media, but I am team you. Nia, excuse me, with this over-sexually charged, pedophile world, it is less than smart for you to put um, baby royalty uh, in this particular pose. Because most of us look at this like a, like a little girl. Unfortunately, you can't do that anymore because there are all kinds of freaks and weirdos. This is the kind of picture that you put on your refrigerator with the magnet. 
you know, or are having your house, but just not on social media. Hopefully, um, Nia, you will smarten up real quick. And Chris, I agree with you. Anyway, it's time for a celebrity shout out. Hit it. Eva Longoria married her fiance, Jose Pepe Bastan, over the weekend in Mexico, which is a great thing because, it, I mean, you know, when you get one of these billionaires on the hook, <laughs> I'm just saying, you gotta reel it in. <laughs> so she had no bridesmaids, she's 41 years old. Well, you know what, smart, no bridesmaids. Who at 41 years old has bride? Why are you bugging us to be your bridesmaid at 41? <laughs> A bridesmaid is like for one of those um, 21 year old girls who's so idyllic about life. Like, oh my gosh, I've got 10 good friends, but I can only have six bridesmaids. In the meantime, by the time you're 41, you're lucky if you have one good friend. So she did the right thing. There were only 80 people there. They got married at his mansion. You know, he's the, the king of He's the president of the largest media company in Latin America. He's the president of the largest media company in Latin America. Score. And this is her third marriage, although she's got no children, so maybe she can sire him an heir or so, just to really lock it down. <laughs> and the big surprise was that Vanessa Williams popped out of a cake or something. No, she didn't pop out of it, but in my mind. <laughs> she, pri she surprised her by singing, save the best for last. Aww. I know, that is so good. <laughs> and she wore um, um, one of her a friend, Victoria Beckham's wedding dresses. And then they were, I don't know, I'm questioning what the dress really looks like though. Right down here, I'm not sure. <laughs> Doesn't matter, she can buy more, she's married a billionaire. But look, so Ricky Martin was there, Mario Lopez, and a whole bunch of other swirly beautiful people. So a good time was had by all. And, and our girl is married, nice. Uh-oh. I hear the maracas. That means it's time for Wendy, Wendy's vacation giveaway. Bring out the island, Suzanne. Mexican corn. Exactly, it's Maze Monday, and they grow a lot of corn in Mexico, so, so I'm just chucking it, or what, hucking Shuck. it. It's chucking it. <laughs> Let's get today's contestant on the phone. Do you like um, Mexican corn, though? Love it, I like to put a little butter and cilantro mm -hmm. on Hello, Sharon in Texas, how you doing? How you doing, Wendy? Hi, Sharon. Yeah. You're today's contestant on Wendy's Vacation Giveaway. Wendy, I've been waiting for like two years. I've been following you on Twitter and Facebook. I've oh. been trying for like two years. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, yeah. here you are. Let's find out what you're playing for. Go ahead, Suzanne. Oh, here Spin we the go. wheel. Here we go. How do you do, Where are you going? Where are you going? Here you go. Where are you going? Where are you going? she's playing for. You're playing for a five-day, four-night vacation at the all-inclusive Moon Palace Golf and Spa Resort in Cancun, Mexico. We'll fly you and a guest to Palace Resort's luxurious property, featuring beautiful beaches and an exciting nightlife. I'm so lazy. I haven't shucked corn in years. I like to buy it already done. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so listen closely, okay, Sharon? Because you're okay. gonna have 15 seconds to answer correctly, and your first answer is your only answer, okay? Okay. Okay, here we go. On, during vacation, um, a segment on Friday's show, Suzanne came out holding a fishing pole. What kind of fish did she have at the end of her line? 15 seconds and go. A salmon? No! no! Snapper! Oh, I knew it was something with an ass. Oh, it's oh. okay. Sharon, listen, we're not gonna send you away empty-handed. We're giving you a $250 cash gift card. Yeah! Thanks for playing. Bye, Sharon. Make sure you watch our show every day, every little thing, because we might be calling you next.